Hello again YouTube, it's Mr Analytical here with another video on the popular Samsung smartwatches. So what I wanted to do today was really to compare the Samsung Gear S3 with the Samsung Gear Sport. For all you guys who are maybe out there trying to decide which one to buy coming up to Christmas now or at any other time, I want to just look at each, compare their specs, compare the things that actually make a difference to your buying decision. I'm not going to go into every detail on all the different apps and all because a lot of them are quite similar. So I just want to hit you with the main points that would actually change your decision on which watch you'll actually need to buy for to get the best for your own use. So really, let's jump straight in and we'll do a quick sort of rundown on, on the specs and then as we go we'll pick out the information that will make a, a difference to your decision. So first of all, on, we'll talk about their actual physical size. So you can see that the Gear S3 is the bigger device and it comes in at 46 by 49 and almost 13 millimeters deep. So it's a slightly deeper of the two. And the Gear Sport then is 11.6 millimeters deep, so it's slightly not just as deep, but it's really only a millimeter or two in it. And you can see it's slightly longer on this side. Uh, they both have a back button, which is the top one here, which is your back button, and they both have a home button. And you can see they both have a nice bright display. The watch face, before you're all asking, is called Future Health and one underscore one. Future Health one underscore one is the watch face, so I quite like it there. It's quite a useful watch face. And you'll see that in my upcoming watch face video. And I'll be able to show you there what it does. There's not an awful amount of difference, but if you have a small wrist, it is worth taking that into account. My wrist is six centimeters across on the top there, so that's the Gear S3 on there. And the Gear Sport then. It's just that little bit smaller. So if you maybe are a bigger person, you know, bigger wrist, you might get away easier with the S3. Or if you like a big watch, the S3 is the one to go for. If you want something smaller and more compact, or maybe you're a lady and your wrist's more fine, and you might like then the smaller look of the sport. In terms of their weight, there's about 10 grams of difference, roughly speaking. If you buy the Frontier, there's obviously Frontier, and there's a classic version, which is the silver version of the S3. So the silver version, which is called the Classic, is 57 grams on the S3. And this one that you see here is the Frontier, and it weighs 62 grams. And that's compared to the Sport, which weighs 50 grams. So there's about 10 grams of difference. And what I've noticed is that if you're doing intense uh, workout or activity, like for example, last night I was uh, doing CrossFit training, and that was an activity called wall balls and we had to actually throw a nine kilogram ball up to a, a nine foot target. Uh, and when I was doing that, I was wearing the Gear S3, as you can see here. And what I found was that the, the impact, you know, every time I threw the ball up and down, the watch was actually, you know, banging up and down on my wrist here. So in terms of, of that, the sport would be better if you're doing a lot of intense activity. In terms of that lighter weight and the smaller diameter, face that it wouldn't be so rough on your wrist just under that heavy movement uh, of intense exercise but that's just something for you to weigh up yourself and see if that's important to you so as i say the, the sport's slightly lighter moving on then to the sensors there's nothing really to compare here so we could almost just skip that and say you know they're both the same so Pretty much we've got the accelerometer inside, which detects your movements and so on, a gyroscopic sensor, barometer, which gives your altimeter, uh, barometer altimeter, the heart rate monitor on both. And what I've heard is that the, the gear sport has a, a, takes into account elevation in terms of your heart rate. So it may be slightly more accurate. I haven't really seen much difference uh, on that. And we have a light sensor. So you can even see there if I cover the screen that the devices go off. Uh, so let's pop them back on again. You'll notice my display isn't going off at any time. That's because I'm using an app called Flaunted and that lets you leave the watches always on. So moving on to the actual display then. 
we've got very similar display on here. So they're both 360 pixels by 360 pixels and they're both AMOLED displays. They both have Corning Gorilla Glass and you can do always on on both of the watches. So really the only difference on the display is their actual their size. So on the S3 we've got 1.3 inches or 33 millimeters. On the Sport we've got 1.2 inches or 30.2 millimeters. So there is 2.8 millimeters difference in terms of the diameter of the, the watch face. So that's 2.8 millimeters difference. So you can see one slightly bigger than the other. And typical use that doesn't make that much difference to the, the response and the use from the displays. In terms of then in terms of connectivity, both of Bluetooth, both of Wi-Fi, both near field connect. The S3 has magnetic secure transmission technology inside, so that means it can mimic your magnetic signal from a card, like a credit card. And it also has NS NFC, which is a near field connect for doing Samsung Pay. Uh, the Gear Sport has the near field connect, but it doesn't seem to have the magnetic secure transmission technology. So if that's something that's important to you, that's worth bearing in mind. So jumping on then to something that's going to split opinion here, the Gear S3 has a built in speaker and the Gear Sport does not. So you can see on the underside of the S3, uh, you see three little dots there and they are basically the speaker speaker holes so that does two things the speaker holes mean that you've got sound on the device but it also means that the waterproofing isn't as good but we'll discuss the waterproofing later but in terms of sound that means you can receive your phone call and you can actually swipe across on the watch and actually talk to the watch and hear the sound coming from the watch of the the person that you're calling on the gear sport when you receive a call you can swipe to the side again to accept the call and the call will then be received on your phone but you can't talk to the watch there is a microphone hole on the side here and that microphone hole is used for things like s voice for responding to messages and so on so it can hear you the watch can hear you but that's not used in the telephone calls and you'll see of another video there where i do actually take and receive a call and show how that works so, but on the S3 you'll be swiping and you can talk to the watch or send it to your phone. On the Sport you do have to send it to your phone or to your Bluetooth headset if you have one. And you can talk obviously through the Bluetooth headset after you accept the call on your Sport. And as I say, you can check out my video on receiving calls on the, the Gear Sport and you'll see how that works. We've got the water resistance which would be another key talking point. Uh, another one to split opinion. The, Samsung Gear S3. It's water and dust resistant to IP68 rating and that means basically you can you know get jets of water on the watch and it won't impact it. Now it does say in the information on the Gear S3 that you shouldn't use it in the shower but I beg to differ because I want to use my watch without having to worry about taking it off and on. So I showered with my watch for over a year and that's pretty much every day and under hot water, power showers, any type of shower uh, that you can imagine um, and not an issue, no sound issues I don't typically try and use the screen in the shower because it sort of bounces about with the impact of the water running on it again I have another video discussing if you can shower with the Gear S3 and where you can see me in the shower with the watch and see what's going on there you can check that one out if you only want the shower then you've nothing to worry about uh, but any more than that, you know, if you're going swimming and stuff, it's starting to be a bit risky. Uh, I have a friend who has used their Gear S3 swimming in the sea with no impact, but that's up at your own risk. But I can confirm that showering will be no problem. Uh, the Gear Sport, however, it's five atmospheres or 50 meter water resistant. So that's a different story. You can take this uh, into the swimming pool, into the sea, wherever you want. There's no speaker holes to be to impact on that. So you'll have no issues there. If you're a keen swimmer, that might swing you towards the, the Gear Sport uh, because of the, the waterproofing. The Gear S3 was typically on an, an, a, a Tizen 2 operating system, but it's now been upgraded in the last week to Tizen 3.0. So you'll see now we do have the same uh, quick settings menu and so on and there's a, I'll maybe do another video at some point showing what the upgraded features are 
of the the Gear S3 now that it has Tizen 3. So both watches are running Tizen 3. So they're both going to be exactly the same in terms of their functionality and so on. Same software. So in terms of sports tracking then, um, again I have another video which shows the two watches as I do a walk and has them uh, both displaying their heart rate and so on. Uh, since the S3 has got now Tizen 3, it has continuous heart rate monitoring. Uh, and you'll see there uh, it takes samples every so often, but when you're doing some sport you will see that it does continually monitor your heart rate. So you'll notice on the back of the Gear Sport we have uh, a bulge there for the heart rate sensor and that does mean that it, it does make better contact with your wrist. So you'll have the Gear S3 quite tight on your wrist uh, and you know there still can be a gap depending on the shape of your wrist. Like if your wrist has you know maybe bony wrist or whatever then you know it could be setting off the surface of your skin. But with the protrusion on the Gear Sport that's inclined to be more accurate. So I find that good in terms of getting better contact. Uh, so that might push you if you're a really sporty person and you want to continually use heart rate that might push you slightly towards the sport. Um, but they're both you know adequate. They're, neither of them are really uh, what I would call really strong fitness trackers. They're you know they're trying to be best of all worlds in terms of the fact that they're sport or smart watches and fitness watches. So I suppose you do have some trade-offs there you have to expect. So in terms of battery life, uh, there's not much difference here. But you have 380 milliamp hour battery in the S3, and you have a 300 milliamp hour battery in the Gear Sport. So there's a wee bit of a difference there. Um, I haven't actually noticed much difference in terms of when I'm using them. What you need to do with these watches is if you want to get the battery life out, you need to be smart with your connection settings and so on. So what what I would typically do, if I'm at my, if I'm at my desk and my phone's sitting in front of me, there's no point really in having it continually connected to Bluetooth and so on. So you can turn on flight mode there, which is just hitting that little airplane. Uh, and that'll ask you to want to turn on flight mode. That will save your battery because it's cutting off all con connectivity and you can keep your GPS off as well. You can have GPS as a setting on this screen as well. You can edit, you can edit this quick settings menu just by pressing and holding on there and pressing the little minus sign to remove one of the icons and add, for example, location on there so that you can turn on and off your GPS signal. So it's being smart with your battery. Like when when you go to bed at night, if you're wearing the watch to use for your alarm, like I do. So you'll see here I have an alarm set for 6.30 and it gives you a little time here now for how long it is until your alarm is going to go off, which is quite useful. So what you need to do when you go to bed then is put it in do not disturb mode so that your watch isn't you know turning off and on or alerting you in the middle of the night. So that's saving battery as well as not disturbing your sleep. The other thing is you can set the bezel will rotate you know against your bed clothes if you're not careful. So there's a new setting in Tizen 3 which lets you disable that action so you can just go down to device and you can say bezel wake up off and that means that if your watch is sleeping when you turn the bezel it won't turn back on. So that means when you're twisting and turning at night that you're not losing battery power because the screen's turning off and on. So that's a useful feature. So in terms of battery life um, either of them is good compared to many smartwatches out there which you'll really only get a day off typically. Uh, so it's really just up to yourselves at that point. So really in summary we've got the Gear S3 on the left, we've got the Gear Sport on the right and which should you buy? So they're pretty much both now around the same price because the Gear Sport's been out for a while. You can pick it up at in, in UK here where I am it's £249 for the the S3 and £299 for the Sport so the Sport's slightly more expensive probably because it's new but apart from that uh, in America it, the pricing might be slightly different for you guys over there but it's worth comparing the price as you make your decision. So the key things to remember are is the S3 has a speaker, the Sport has no speaker so think about whether that is important for you. The S3 is heavier and it's bigger so if that's important if the size is important that you want to keep it small or whatever that's another factor in your decision and the the other thing is 
the waterproofing. So the S3 you can shower with it and so on. You can use it in you know splashing around whatever. But in terms of going swimming or or underwater work, then you need to be going straight for the sport for that reason, uh, and sticking with the sport to get the 50 meters water resistance there. So really, that's the key differences. A lot of the other things are don't really matter that much, uh, and won't really make much difference to you. Um, and then the, obviously the software is the same as we've said. So. So guys, I hope you find this useful and if you have any other questions on either of the watches, let me know if it helps you make your decision. But uh, they both, you know, give your notifications in a similar way. They both track activity in a similar way. You know, there isn't really an awful lot of difference except those key things that I've pointed out, the speaker, the waterproofing and so on. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed that review and hopefully that's helped you make your decision uh, and to be helped you be able to pick one or the other of these two great smartwatches. If you do want to, there's links below which drop you into Amazon uh, where you can pick up these watches you can buy them directly from Samsung of course so guys thanks for watching I hope you find that useful and I'll be back soon with another video thank you